Hi, my name is Dan Stewart. I'm, uh, well, I guess recently I'm the managing director of the Middle East. <coughs> Sorry, I'm not a big podium guy. I'm used to walking around, so if I fidget a lot, it's because I'm not used to standing behind a podium, but. So, <coughs> sorry. So basically, like I was saying, so recently I became the managing director of Living Social Middle East. Not so long ago, I uh, actually had a company. A company is called GoNabbit. So this is a company I founded almost exactly to the day two years ago. Um, I know this isn't a session on entrepreneurship, um, but I, I remember coming home, saying to my wife, who was nine months pregnant, pregnant at the time, you know, I'm going to quit my job, liquidate all of our savings, and start a company. What do you think? Um, it actually went surprisingly well, but uh, you know, at the time, and uh, you know, it just became me and Excel for a little while, and then you know, I, I joined up with a partner, and then we launched. But we launched in May of 2010. And essentially, what we do, if you don't know what we do as a business, um, we feature. It's very local to local, online to offline commerce. Come on our website. We sell stuff. We sell it at a discount because we're asking you to change behaviors by prepaying for something normally you pay for. So normally you book for a restaurant, eat, pay. For us it's pay, book, eat. Why would I change behaviors? Because I'll give you a price incentive to do so, right? So essentially how it works. And we went through, we launched in Dubai, then we were in Abu Dhabi, then we were in Beirut, then we were in Amman, Jordan, then we were in Kuwait for a while, then we were in, in Egypt. So um, we ended up as a business working in a number of countries. But you know, I just want to talk about training wheels for a second. So it's been said by someone else that eBay uh, was essentially training wheels for e-commerce for merchants. You have the stuff, you can ship the stuff, they'll bring you the buyers by, by hosting your, your payments and transactions, and eBay being your storefront. And I think in a lot of ways, you know, there was really no e-commerce environment um, in the region. I've been here for a decade and had never really bought anything online um, in the region. Uh, except I think maybe flowers or like a gift basket before. And I like to think that, you know, uh, local deals like we were doing with GoNabbit was training wheels for e-commerce for buyers. Why? Because we all know there's no address system here really. It's all like PO boxes or like referential addressing. I live around the corner from McDonald's beside the barbershop kind of address systems. But for us, we don't ship you a product. We send you a virtual product, which is a voucher attached to an email. So. Yes, there's still that payments piece of e-commerce, but it helped us get around that delivery piece of e-commerce and really let us you know, have a bit of an easier entry point. Um, but that said, I spent probably 50% of the first year, actually 75%. Half of that 75 was legal, the other half was online payments, really. It was how I spent my time. And it's really a function of the region. Um, just where we ended up, it kind of ended up where no credit card has gone before in the region. So, um, we launched as a credit card business in Lebanon, in the UAE, in Egypt, in Jordan. You paid by a credit card. If you didn't have a credit card, you could come to our office and pay cash, which happened occasionally. Uh, if you couldn't come to our office and you didn't have a credit card, you didn't buy. We didn't do cash on delivery and some of the things that other websites do. Um, but that said, you know, we launched the first daily deal site in the MENA region. We were the first globally in Arabic. We were on everything in two languages. We were in nine markets in four countries. They're mostly e-commerce. I mean, eventually we kind of relented. Uh, I still don't like it, but we relented and we'll do cash payments in Lebanon and in Egypt. Um, we have staff everywhere, so we have an office in Cairo, an office in Egypt. Sorry, that's the same place. We have an office in Egypt, we have an office in Lebanon, we have an office in Jordan, we have an office in the UAE. And uh, we were 45 employees when we sold out to Living Social uh, in of June of last year. And the irony is, is my son was born uh, almost to the day we incorporated the company and my daughter was born the day before the transaction was announced. So my, my kids are kind of bookends. So, I guess I like to say I had a startup and my wife had a job and two kids during that time. So I actually uh, think her job was a bit harder. But So we sold out Living Social. It's, amongst other things, it's a daily deals company based in the United States. Um, Living Social operates in 640 daily deal markets around the world, 60 million members, 25 countries, six continents, um, and does a lot of different things. And uh, it was really exciting for us. And just one of the things I want to talk about is just what we've seen from uh, a regional perspective for commerce and also from mobile commerce. Um, you know, we do research, we do biannual e-commerce research, and there's a lot of different things. And um, I can, if you ask me later, you know, I can give you all this information. But just two things I want to point out is just the numbers at the bottom. So we did this in March last year, and then we did it in August last year. And one of the questions was, is people's preferred payment methods. And so in March, 53% of people preferred a combination of credit card or debit card, like online-enabled debit card. And in August, that became 69%. 
And so that's great for us as a business. I think it's great for you know, other entrepreneurs looking to create actual e-commerce businesses you know, and sell things online and take payments online. And I think it's very linked to the second stat on the right on the bottom, which is that in March, you know, of people that felt confident buying from local websites was 57% and it increased to 75%. And I don't think it's because confidence increased so much, is that there was actually more to buy online from this part of the world. We've seen flash sales sites come up and do fairly well, you know, some raise some money. You know, we've seen, you know, Groupon entered the UAE, which is the first time we had any international e-commerce company enter the Middle East. Living Social, we transact with them, was the first M&A deal in the region's history in e-commerce space. So I think just having more to buy online in this part of the world backed into people becoming more confident actually transacting online. Just a couple of things I want to talk about, you know, so we all know stats and, you know, there's lots of people here that have way more stats than I do. So, you know, there's 250 mobile phones in the region and, you know, smartphones, and penetration is increasing. Um, an interesting stat is that, you know, smartphone penetration in the UAE, for example, of 100%, you know, of that 100% piece of smartphones, in other words, like phones that can access the internet, that's still 70% Nokia. It's only 3% iPhone. Um, so it's still very, someone asked about Symbian before and whatever, it's still a Nokia part of the world, um, very much so. Uh, Blackberry is obviously still far stronger than, than iPhone. And so I think, you know, it's one of the things that we have. So with Living Social, we have a mobile app. It's black, it's, uh, sorry, it's Android and iPhone. So when I, you know, talk to them, hey, look, we need to look at a Nokia app. They're even Nokia app. Nobody uses Nokia's. I'm like, well, not where you are, but our part of the world is much different, you know? And so what have we seen? So we've been running a mobile app, iPhone and Android, for three months now in the region. So this is in UAE, Egypt, Lebanon, and Jordan. So we've seen this steadily increase, but we do 6% of our transactions through mobile phones. So what does that mean? It means somebody opens up an app, uses their credit card, and transact transacts. And because they get their voucher, which is also there um, on the app, you actually never have to interact with our website. You can literally register, pay, and redeem with your, with your voucher through mobile. And so 6% um, compares to about, I didn't tell you this, but 17% for living social in the US. So I think 6% is not so bad after three months in a part of the world where I challenge you today to find me something else that you can buy online in this part of the world through a mobile app. Um, there's nothing. So, I mean, it's not like, you know, we're the 15th or the 50th, the 500th app where you can buy something. It's the only one, right? Um, so, what can you do? You can come online. You know, you can see the deals that we run. We sell product and services now as well. You can purchase travel. So, you could buy a trip. Uh, the one at the top is actually a Kilimanjaro climb. So, you could literally go and open up your phone, buy a trip and to go on a Kilimanjaro climb. Um, the guy who was actually leading it was the youngest Egyptian ever summit Everest. Uh, random plug, but anyway, um, you can buy it, you get your vouchers, don't write down my voucher code, that's not cool, because I want to go to these, use these movie tickets, but uh, just, pretend you, that, just pretend you don't see my number, but uh, you know, I can use my voucher, I can show it, I never have to print off anything, so it's paperless. You know, some of the other things we're looking to bring, so I mean, you know, I'll just finish off with, you know, Living Social in the US is now getting into online food ordering. So it's not so much about discount driven, it's literally I'm right here right now, you know, I want to order something to eat that'll deliver to here. What delivers to here? Menus online, menus on the app. I order, I pay. It's not a matter of trying to communicate clearly what I'm ordering. So I actually think this is, you know, and I, my credit card's on file, so I'm paying for it. And so these are the kind of things where it's not just a matter of, you know, I'm going to buy a movie ticket and then redeem it, but really trying to push into an area of really kind of connecting buyers with local merchants. And I think, you know, that was one of the things that appealed to us. We had three different acquisition offers. We chose Living Social and why? Because we felt like, you know, they were really moving in the same direction that we wanted to move and, you know, things that were relevant for the region. But just the one thing, you know, I think, you know, we should talk about today in the panel is just that no matter what you're doing, whether you're selling in the souk, in the mall, or online, you're still competing on at least two of price, availability, and convenience. And I think that doesn't change. So I think, you know, no matter what you want to sell, whatever the channel is, if you're not competing on at least two of these, um, you're not competing. So this is me, and uh, thanks very much.